Hey everyone, welcome to our Monday live stream. I, oh, oh, oh I, John's hey, not back here. John's oh, not here ah. yet, but oh wait, I think he's coming. Oh, hi, John. Welcome. Yeah, hi guys. Sorry, what this is you? my daughter Hope was running around, and then my son he uh, he had some kids stuff. So sorry, I'm late. Well, you know. Speaking of kids, we should talk about kids today. We really should because our article today is it's the end of a two-part lesson in Advanced Magazine. We're talking about raising kids, how it can be tough, and some advice there. Right. By the way, uh, next week we don't have our regular live stream. We'll talk about that, so pay attention today. I want to I want to ask you guys a question. What is something your parents did that you appreciate? I need some parenting advice. <laughs> As you know, we just had a new baby, right? Right, right. Yeah. And no, something my parents did that I always appreciated and maybe this isn't for young kids, but um, they took us on a big uh, family trip one summer. Uh, we grew up on the eastern United States okay. uh, in the New York City area. Huh. And one summer they took us all by train and then by car out to all the way to Seattle on the Upper West Coast. And then we rented a car and drove down to Los Angeles over the course of several weeks. And we saw wow. the West Coast. We, we had never seen it before, my sister and I. And wow. I always, you know, that was something my parents didn't have to do, but they did for us. And it was great. So that, that would be my recommendation of what parents can do for kids. Yeah. Show them the world. Doing things with your kids is a lot of fun. With little ones, it can be so difficult. I want to ask you a poll question while you comment in English for that discussion question. Good afternoon, B. Great to see you. We're glad you're here. Um, so what is the hardest part of raising kids? What do you think? Oh, bless you. I know a lot of people in my generation uh, don't have kids and they think it's just too difficult. Let's talk about that. What are, there are real things at play. Is it the money and the labor? You know, it's just difficult to produce the resources for the kids. Right. Um, time and scheduling I put on there. Oh, she escaped <laughs> because... Uh, you know, your, your whole schedule shifts when you're married, right, you know, right. and then when with kids, it's another level of that, sure. as we know. Um, also, wisdom decision making. I hear people say all the time, oh, I don't want to bring kids into the world we have right now. Yeah. And, and it's, there's a lot we could talk about there, but just wisdom to make the right decisions in today's day and age. And the last one that kind of is similar, fear and concern. So making the right decisions and then worried about disasters or, or something going wrong sure, with sure. the kids. So what's something your parents did that you appreciated? You said road trips, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. That was great. Um, was there other things that you remember doing? You have a brother also? I have a sister. You I have, have a sister. sister. Yeah. Wow. And you might see Hope in the background there. I've got three kids, um, little, little Mikey, Hope, and then Elijah. They're all three under the age of three. And she's very vocal. She's going to be playing the drums back there. So look out. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about this, this first question. What's something our parents did? For, for a lot of us, we've got um, great childhood memories. Hey, you, come over here. Ah! And there's my other son, Elijah, running around in the background. One thing that I appreciated that my parents did was road trips as well. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you'll have to see our January article, by the way. There's, Talk about road trips. Yeah, the most classic road trip in the U.S. is Route 66. Right now, Route 66 is still sort of a small historic road. But back in the day, a lot of, uh, a lot of movies are set in Route 66. So you got to check out that article. Some amazing history about probably one of the most famous automobile roads in the world, I right. think, pretty easily. I, I still see Route 66 merchandise even even over here in the East. Sure, sure. Yeah. There's a popular song called Route 66, get your kicks on Route 66. Da -da 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 yeah, and the, there used yeah. to be a TV show in the 60s called Route 66 about yeah. these two young guys who drive along Route 66 and have all these adventures. It's a, it's a real part of at least 20th century American mythology. Yeah, and for the, road for the family road trip, Route 66 is certainly legendary. Well, let's talk about the, the next question. Evangeline, hi. You say you appreciate your mom for cooking healthy food for you every day. Yep. Yeah, I, I appreciate my mom for just feeding us, and I appreciate my wife. It takes a lot of work to keep the kids fed, and it's kind of a constant... Uh, it's, it's sort of a constant battle, you know. Kids yeah. don't always want to eat the right things. And so 
I would say that's one of the harder parts of the day to day of raising kids. Let's right. let's get into some vocabulary here though. Now get your get your pens out, get your keyboards ready. Feel free to type these out, use it in a sentence. Leaving the nest, okay? We talk about our little kids and there's my wife, my amazing wife Irene playing the drums. We have uh, this this term an empty nester and leaving the nest. Can you right. explain that for us? Yes, leaving the nest and empty nester, they're related, as mm. you might guess. It means when you, a parents have raised children to the age that they can leave the home and live on their own. And the yeah. home becomes the nest. And so when children go off to college or go off and live in their own uh, place or whatever, it's called leaving the nest. And yes. it leaves behind an empty nest. Yeah. And so empty nest is a phrase that um, it, it's not just to describe the kids leaving the house. It's a phrase that uh, summarizes sometimes parents, when the nest is empty, they can struggle a little bit because they've become so used to having the kids there and having them be part of their lives, an important part of their lives. Yeah. So we'll talk about sometimes, oh, I know this elderly couple down the street, they're suffering a little bit from empty nest syndrome that's right not having the kids around anymore and yeah. you know so what do you do with your day now yeah so the empty nest you know it's this metaphor for uh for raising kids and having them fly out of the nest like little birds we've got a term in our article you'll have to check out from today uh hit that join button if you're interested in getting some very high quality and relatively low cost english content that goes along with our youtube content here good afternoon brian great to see you brother so the age of emancipation emancipation is a word that means to be set free from being under somebody's authority and i need to go emancipate my kid really quick can you explain the age of emancipation yeah the age of emancipation is this term it's a legal term and it means the age at which a child is considered able to live on their own and no, no, take legal actions oh, on their own. The state, well, the government decides this. Do you say take legal action? Take legal action, oh. yes. Like he's taken two kids. This is taking legal action um, to allow a child to sign a contract, for example, oh. without instead of having their parents oh. sign it. Or um, all, uh, it's it's not something that happens too often. Usually, at least in the West, kids just reach the uh, age of majority. They yes. call it, which is usually 18. In most parts of the world, in fact, it's 18, and that means they can live on their own. Their parents can't, you know, hold them in the house to punish them for something they did wrong anymore. They they uh, they'd be charged with kidnapping. In fact, if the parents did that, <laughs> if the kids were at the age of the majority, they can vote. They can join the army. They can uh, buy a drink of alcohol, all that sort of thing. But the age of emancipation is something that yes. happens sometimes in rare situations where there is a need, where the child's interests are best served by having them act as their act on their own, act independently. That's instead right. Of the parents. Doing That's the right. Work. They're set free from their parental authority. Now let's talk about some of our other vocab here. Hi, B. You appreciate your parents also how to make the most of what you own. It's true. Contentment mm. is something that is important to be modeled in the household. Hey, you. Um, I've got my wild little Hope here who's a year and a half. Hi, Kyle. Gra glad hey, you're there. Kyle. Let's talk about some fun kid expressions. There's one expression that is about apples that I want you to know. The apple, I'm going to release you into the wild here. I'm going to emancipate <laughs> you. The apple is going to fall from the tree, but not go far fly, fly, from the go. tree. So an apple doesn't far, fall far from the tree is a phrase that means kids turn out to be like their parents. Right. Sometimes this can be a bad thing, you know, if, if a parent is in trouble and you can say, oh, that kid's in trouble too. Yeah. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, yeah. but it can also be a compliment. It depends on context. There's another fun phrase that you will see if you read enough in English. Little pitchers have big ears. A pitcher here is a vase, a vase for water, right? Right. And it has a handle that we call that the the ear, basically. Right, right. So, this isn't a pitcher in baseball, you know, right. Shohei Otani and all that. Yeah. It means a little, basically it's saying, when you're around kids, be careful what you say, because even though they're small, they have the big ears, big handles. You know, I never knew what that expression meant. Yeah, I, I think if I'm not 
wrong there. But little pictures have big ears means careful what you say around your kids, they will hear. And um, let's let's learn some terms for kids before we let you go here. Looks like our poll, by the way, is coming in. So I, I do want to I do want to look at that for a second. Nobody is worried about fear or concern, at least not more than other mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. Money and labor is second mm -hmm. place and time scheduling is first place. It yeah, certainly yeah. it certainly is difficult. I'm, a, I'm not a great multitasker. My wife is much better. <laughs> and so being able to decide what comes first is really important. You know, as you can hear, it's always really busy in our house. I decided to bring the kids in today just to give you a sense of real life, what that's like with three kids under three. Right, these kids are not actors. They're not, they're not paid actors. Yeah. But as Evangeline says, there are movies of Hollywood about empty nesters. Yeah, but there is also a movie of Hollywood where the parents try hard to push their son out of the house. Yes. That's right. Called Failure to Launch, or at least one of them. <laughs> um, because their son already is over 30 and still lives at home. Or the movie Step Brothers is also a ah, comedy yes. about that. It's, it's, a, it's a, a scenario we can all relate to. I'm going to have to kick these kids out of the nest here soon. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. we, we have a very full nest right now, and it is so much fun. Don't be scared uh, of having your own kids by my kids. I promise you it's fun. That doesn't seem to be a fear. <laughs> So, let's talk about a few kid-related terms. Let's level up your English vocab today. Hopefully you know a few of these already, but let's go over them again. First of all, offspring. Offspring. Uh, offspring is a term that means your kids, basically. Yeah, they, yeah, your descendants. Yeah, they spring off of you, you know? Yeah. yeah, and that term can be generally used for any kind of animal in, in biology. The offspring yeah. is the next generation. It can be used both in a singular sense or a plural sense. We could refer to all three of John's kids That's as right. his offspring. Singular, Or yeah. just one of them. Like, here is my offspring, John. Yeah. Same word. You don't add an S. You don't have offsprings. It's yeah. just singular or plural, same spelling. Yeah, we can, we can always uh, use that. And, oh, hi, uh, Chao Fu. Sorry if I m messed up your name. Especially when you have more than one kid. Time is never enough. It's true. It's kind of like being in a war, like an amazing <laughs> love-filled war. But you're, you're always on. You never know when the next yeah, yeah. When the kid next will wake up. Assault is coming in. Yeah, but there's this time right after the kids go down to bed that's like the sweet time. You know, before the parents go down to bed. Uh, when the kids have gone down, there's always like this window of time that God puts in the day with kids where you're not ready to sleep. You might be physically ready to sleep, <laughs> but they're asleep. So there's still time, but you just have to be ready yeah, to, be, yeah. to be on and when a kid cries or yells or has some trouble. All right, we've got the opposite of offspring, your forebears. Forebears means your parents and grandparents, the ones that came before you and bore you, bore or had, had offspring, had, right, had right. kids. The so ones who forbeared you in, a, in yeah. bad English, but yeah, bore is the right verb. This right. has nothing to do with ah, bears in that sense. No, not bears. Yeah. yeah. And you could say if someone is forbearing, it could also mean in a different way that they put up with a lot. So yeah. parents have to be <laughs> forbearing. Do, like, yeah. Oh, it's very like, uh, you know, the, uh, putting up with a lot. Of yes, things. yes. Yeah. So, um, or they're bearing with somebody. Because kids are so juvenile. They're so juvenile. Juvenile means, uh, we get the word junior, kind of uh, kind of a similar word. Juvenile means just young, yeah. not mature, not adult. Yeah. Right, that's the noun form. They use it sometimes as an adjective, yeah. to, the way I was using it just a moment ago, to mean someone who is not behaving as well as they should. Someone right. who is behaving like younger than they really are. Yeah, it's kind of an insult if you use it in an adult. Yeah, yeah don't be so juvenile. Yeah, yeah. yeah, don't be so juvenile. Okay, now for the fun vocab, get ready. Get ready to write this down. <laughs> and if you, if you haven't taken our poll yet, ch chime in there. I want to see I want to see what you think. Also, I'd love to hear this other question um, right here at the end. What is the most important thing to remember when raising kids? Okay, what did your parents do? And what is the most important thing to remember? We'll talk about that in a minute or two here. Um, let's do some fun names for kids. Okay, a tot. Use it in a sentence. Ah, oh, John has three tots here today. Yeah. A it's a terrible sentence. It, that's great. Like a toddler. Yeah. It's short for a toddler. We have that cute uh, food term, tater tots. Have you had tater mm -hmm. tots before? The little, they're like... Right. It's a good point. <laughs> tots is not just exclusive to children. It means a small uh, bit of anything. You could, uh, a tot could be a kid. You could also say, let me have a tot of wine. A little tot. Just, just a tot, or a tater just tot. A tot. You know, yeah. It just means a like little a one. A right, shot. right. Yeah. So you can tot. see how it got applied to kids eventually, but it's not just for kids. Yeah. Um, there's another word, a tyke. 
a tyke means a little one. I'm gonna go grab my tyke here, and I'll, I'll, go, I'll go bring a tyke over here. Yeah, we're about to see a real live a tyke. real live tyke. Ah! I'm not sure ah! where the word tyke comes from. That's Call something maybe for one of you to look up. T y k e tyke. It means a little kid, but. How it came to mean that, I don't think. Do you know how tyke came to mean tyke? Uh, not sure. I don't know at all. Could be a borrowed it's, word. It's Sounds pretty like, cute. Yeah. You know, if you want to describe, oh, the little tykes the at little, Christmas. Yeah, we're we're bopping around. <laughs> the, there are also some other kids that are a little, a little, a few other words for kids that are more like slang. One of them, yeah, toddlers. Exactly. Like a tot is short for toddlers. And so a tyke is also a small kid, not a bigger kid. But she is definitely a tyke. Um, now there's this word urchin that normally refers to an orphan that lives kind of in the streets or in poverty. But sometimes we jokingly refer to the kids when they're when they're dirty as little urchins, like yeah, when, yeah. when they're little misbehaving kids. It's kind of a British English term that yeah. you'll sometimes hear in, if you read Charles Dickens or if you see a, a musical maybe set in that time, the kids might be referred to as urchins. Not That's something right. you really hear that much in. Yeah everyday Western language nowadays, but like it's a good street to know. urchin. A street urchin. Street yeah. urchin, yeah. But sometimes you can call your kids urchins uh, out of fun. There's some other terms here that are more like uh, <laughs> metaphors. One. one is ankle biter. Ankle an biter. ankle biter, so your ankles are what attach your foot to your leg, right? right? And an ankle biter would be a little kid that can bite your ankles. They're always bugging you and uh, metaphorically biting your ankles. So that's kind of fun. You can say, oh, the house was full of little ankle biters during the holidays. Um, there's also another term uh, that's also kind of negative at the end here, rug rat. <laughs> a, a rug rat is another, it, it's, only use it as a joke. You know, it means a little, like a little rat that runs around on the rug. There yeah. was a famous Nickelodeon uh, kids show called Rug Rats. But anyway, we've got um, one or two more terms here, small fry and spawn. Small fry, very similar to tater tot. <laughs> yeah. Actually. A small fry. Yeah. yeah. Here, a small fry means a little fish. A fry is a baby fish. So a small fry means, oh, the little, the little kids, the is little fish. Is that right? A fry is a baby fish. It I, didn't, is, yeah. I thought it was literally like a French fry no. that happened to be small. No, 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 no. Like, a, like a fry, it's yeah. A, oh. Yeah, not like fried. See? You learn yeah. something new every day right even here in the studio. Enough. Keep watching. And another term that is also related to fish is your spawn. A spawn normally <laughs> are, are baby fish yeah. <laughs> and so, or little baby frogs. Yeah. And so the kids are like the spawn. Right. So yeah. we thought, you know, let's call the kids baby frogs. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, be sure, you know, when you, when you talk about kids, Let's just be gentle with them. Being a constant companion is the yes. most important thing for raising kids. Yeah. Shafu, I think, is giving some wisdom there. Because, of course, kids are little, uh, little image bearers. They're like little mirrors, right? We, we all have these, these hearts that reflect something. So whatever you give your kids to reflect, it will really affect them. And if you're not there, then they're, they'll find something else to reflect. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, and Ty, you say, even though time is limited, always remember to spend time with kids, playing with them. Mm -hmm. It's so yeah. true. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely the most valuable thing you can give your kids. And I think probably one of the most difficult things um, to balance sometimes. Well, I'm really, I'm really uh, interested in what else you think. We have a few announcements really quickly. Next week, th that is the 25th, there's no live stream. No live stream next week. Yeah. Go watch something else at 1 o'clock next week. Yeah, there's a lot of other great YouTube content, or go check out one of our old shows. Um, on January 1st, we're not going to... That's New Year's Day, and that's we have... two weeks. We have no work. Peter and I will be out... We're going to go surfing. Surfing. With his tots. With my tots. Yeah. Are we? I'll be okay. on the board. He'll be on the board. <laughs> we'll have one of them <laughs> each on the board, you know. Stressing me out just thinking about that. <laughs> the tots of the ocean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whew. It's been a stressful couple of months, readers. Well, they're um, small fries. <laughs> so, but we'll, we'll have it the next day, next Tuesday. So we won't see you live until January 2nd. Um, if you are in the island of Taiwan or watching online, check out our Christmas show. It is on Good TV, I believe, Saturday. Um, I don't know the airtime. We can maybe try to put that in the comments section. But we do have an amazing live show that we help to work on. You'll see Peter and myself perform there, and um, also check out our advanced magazine. Finally, you can buy January already. So if you want a head start, 
to read through it before you listen to the radio program, which is available for members. Uh, check it out. There's some fun articles. If you're a fan of Peng Meng Hui, we're doing an interview series about her amazing life. So you'll get some of her backstory. Okay, Peter, any final advice for those parents out there? Oh, just I would repeat again, time in mm. terms of what you're because what I talked about how my parents took my sister and I on a vacation, that was just another way of spending time with us instead yeah. of going off and doing their own thing, letting me and my sister go play. I mean, that's good too. But spend time with the kids in mm. some way, take them on a trip or just hang out in the house, uh, playing makeup games with them, something. Time is something we all have and we can all give. Oh, and B, thank you for your time coming to watch the show on Saturday. We'd love to hear what you think. Hopefully, uh, you laughed, you cried, you listened to the Heavenly Melodies, amazing voices, and enjoyed the show. We've, uh, yeah, we've all got a, a limited amount of time, so people are the most valuable thing on the planet, I'm convinced, so spend time with those kids. Yeah. And, and if you don't have kids of your own, that's fine, but remember that you can always be an influence to the kids around you. So we all kind of, it, there's this phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. And I think as parents cultivating healthy community, whether it's like in the church with your family, just build your other relationships too, and you'll find that it's a lot easier to raise kids right. with help. Well, parents, parents, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, that's it for today. And uh, we really appreciate your time. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy everyone. New Year, also. And wow. Happy New Year, right. We won't... <laughs>